Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to be taking a look at the different functions that take place within the liver. We've already had a look at the bit in the red font there in part one of the video. We're now going to move on to the bit in the black font there at the bottom and the different stages and the different uh, functions involved in the liver and within the hepatocytes in the liver. So to start off with a couple of terms, um, urea, this is the main nitrogenous waste from a mammalian body and it's produced from the breakdown of excess amino acids that make up proteins. The ornithine cycle, this is a cycle that occurs within the hepatocytes to convert ammonia into urea. And detoxification also occurs within the hepatocytes. Hepatocytes are the cells within the, livers, uh, within the liver. And this is involving the removal of toxic substances from the blood to convert them into less toxic substances. So urea is formed in two stages. Um, it's formed, first of all, in the deamination of an amino acid. So amino acids, in, when we've got too much of them, when they're in excess in our blood, we cannot store them. So they have to be broken down because they've still got quite a lot of good resources there to be used by our bodies. We don't just want to get rid of our, our amino acids that are in excess. We want to be able to extract some of that um, energy from them. So the first thing that happens is we've got deamination of our amino acid into ammonia, which occurs in the hepatocytes, and then ammonia is converted into urea using the ornithine cycle again within the hepatocytes. Um, so here's the word formula for deamination. You do need to know this. So like I mentioned, it uses excess amino acids, it converts it into a keto acid by adding oxygen. And that keto acid can then be used either in aerobic respiration by going into the Krebs cycle, or it can be used to make things like lipids and cholesterol. The ammonia, however, does need to be changed into urea and excreted. So urea is formed then from the ornithine cycle. Again, this occurs in the hepatocytes, in the liver cells. And ammonia is added to carbon dioxide to form urea and water. Again, you need to know these formulas here at the top. The urea is then taken to the kidneys in the blood uh, where it is excreted. Um, and dissolved in water to make urine. So the ornithine cycle, you do need to know this in a, a bit more detail. I have seen a couple of exam questions where it's asked you to fill in the blanks here. Um, so here it is in all its glory. I advise that you pause this, uh, try and rewrite it, cover it up, try and rewrite it again until you know all the different parts involved and you're able to just regurgitate that information. I know it's a bit boring, but it is a need to know. So pause it and have a go around trying to recall as much of the ornithine cycle as possible. So we're going to move on to look at the glycogen and the detoxification. Uh, so the storage of glycogen, you should really know this from going right way back to biological molecules. Glycogen is formed from uh, alpha glucose. It has one to four, alpha one to four and alpha one to six glycosidic bonds. And it forms this branched molecule, which is ideal for storage of glucose because it's insoluble and it doesn't affect osmosis. So glycogen is stored within the hepatocytes within the liver. If you need to go back to biological molecules and revise that a little bit more. But we're gonna move on to detoxification. Um, so detoxification of alcohol is the main thing we need to look at here. So alcohol that um, people drink um, basically contains ethanol. Ethanol is converted into ethanol by the removal of a hydrogen. This hydrogen is added onto NAD to perform reduced NAD, and it uses the enzyme ethanol dehydrogenase. The ethanol, which is, con which is made from that process, is then converted into ethanoate or acetate by actually accepting that hydrogen back from my reduced NAD to form NAD or oxidized NAD again, and it does this using the enzyme ethanol dehydrogenase. Now, this cycle is really important because um, in this process, we have the reduced NAD is constantly being recycled. Now, um, if you drink too much alcohol, um, it means that you're going to be using up too much of your NAD um, as, and it's going to be stuck as that reduced form. And this can reduce in symptoms such as the fatty liver, which is not a good thing. Um, but this is the process that you need to know about. The acetate that's produced at the end of this process can then again enter the Krebs cycle, which is part of aerobic respiration, which you'll learn about when you get onto respiration. All of this occurs within the hepatocytes. The hepatocytes will need a lot of uh, mitochondria to produce ATP for these processes and a fantastic blood supply, which we did talk about within the first video. Guys, good luck with your exams. All the best.